Good morning, cultists. In our previous episode, we ended things off in Schmidt's Antiques, where we've come to inquire about the Cthulhu statuette that we found. So let's go talk to him now. Uh, I intend to consummate the dying wish of a person who fell victim to the cultists. Wait, consummate as in make love to his dead body? Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, right, right. Because we saw Cornelius die in front of us. Well, not really in front of us. We saw him die. And we promised to use his pocket watch or his family's heirloom for some kind of purpose or another. Um, I guess. Though, I'm not going to lose the item, am I? I want to see what I can actually get from this. Out of all the possible things that I could be wished for in this world for the next, did this person specifically entreat you to pester me during my studies? You're rather becoming a nuisance to me. Excuse me? Your endearing nature never fails to draw me to your humble shop, Isidore. It's not hard to grasp why the mob leaves you alone. You're an expert at deterring what little business you have, I'll give you that. Hmm... Alright, well, I mean... They're all kind of, I guess, negative-ish, but sure. I'm out to my elbows redacting this atrocious translation of Sephiraziel Hamalaka. So, could you just state your business and leave me be? Very well, I want to trade this watch for a special artifact of yours. It was his final request that I use this watch for something I believe in. The owner of this watch was a stubborn, stubborn do-gooder and he wanted me to make good use of it. I guess, something I believe in. Sure. Quite the idealist this fallen soul must have been, and equally charitable in his ways. A rare breed in this foul pandemonium. Let me see. Leans over the item with his jeweler's loop. Hmm. Isidore scrutinizes the watch for a few moments. It's evident that the hapless victim's heirloom has captured his attention. It's handmade, 24 karat gold plated, and is of near impeccable craftsmanship. There's an inscription, V. Ricoletti, leading me to the conclude that it's Italian. Could be a hundred years old, still ticking away gracefully. I can see that this person had exquisite taste. I may have just the item to commemorate his memory. Sifts through the objects in the glass case, then through the cabinets, and as he's about to give up, he spots it. Ah, there it is. St. Vixen's Waxen Hands, upon which... Countless Catholic prayers have been made in honor of humility of his humility and passion. Unfortunately, his bones were plundered during the riots of 1815. Not to be confused with the uh, War of 1812 between Canada and the United States of America, where in Canada, or I guess it was the British colony at the time, kicked the ass of the st anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyway, St. Vincent, uh, Vincent was the patron of charitable deeds, and it seems rather meaningful to trade it for the deceased's pocket watch. If you're lying to me, know that there will be no shortage of spa uh, space in Gehinnom. Gehinnom. I guess that's somehow... Maybe that's like a different version of Gehenna, which I believe is the uh, Jewish version of Hell. Mm, I'll think about it. Should we keep it? Hmm. Maybe I should keep it. Maybe I can talk to the different... Um, uh, vendors around town about uh, this thing. Sure. Very well. Just know that I made my offer and you won't be able to acquire the wax and hands from me. Any other way, think about it. Wait. So I guess I can't buy it from him then. Alright, fine. Well, what do you know about the statuette? Isidore pushes his glasses uh, up over his blurry eyes and takes a closer look at the object. It looks like a rendition of one of the deities that the cult worships. I've seen a crude totem similar to the one on Riverside. His eyes fell to the figurine again. The art style is peculiar, though. I cannot attribute it to any culture I know of, and I can't say that I enjoy its presence. Take it away, sir. I don't want anything related to that bloody cult in my shop. He returns to his business. I see. Hmm. So, I suppose we need to investigate the statuette ourselves. Gotcha. And we also need to decipher the meaning of the poem. Is there something that I can do to get that deciphered? Uh, 
I'm assuming not. Maybe it's something that we can do during rest. Uh, what do I do about the Cthulhu statuette? I can't seem to right click on it. Hmm. Okay. Also, I'm thinking maybe we should give Sonya a melee weapon. Just in case someone rolls up to, um, Shanker and all that such. Now she's got her own little, uh, shanking device. Sure. Okay. Can we... what is this? Ease paths and meanings. Hmm. Alright, I might actually come back to this guy, um, for the wax and hands of, um... St. Benedict Cumberbatch, or whatever the hell he was offering to me. Uh, where's the grocery store, by the way? Is it here? No, it's not on this map. Um... Hmm... Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure where we need to go to... ...examine the statuette a little bit better. But I'm guessing maybe we need to rest. Now, the question is, can I rest on top of the... What's happening here? Stabber! What? Arkham Stabber strikes again! Hey, you know who died? Uh, Another false victim to the Stabber! What? It wasn't the Stabber! You mean it was the, um... The, the, the cult! You see a man with an ambiguous twinkle of expectation towards you in his eyes. He approaches you with an almost unnatural affection. He can hardly contain his excitement. You! Uh, what about me? It's you! Uh, do I know you? You are him! I mean, you are you, but you are also him! Ha! <laughs> Those eyes! Um, who am I? You know, in time we'll live those l lovely, lovely moments again. Ha! Ah, and I'll be a good boy this time. He locks his eyes. Alien and affectionate on yours. Billy will be a very good boy. Uh, what do you want from me? Oh, don't you worry, sir. I'm not a spoiled brat who must have uh, everything his own way anymore. Told you Billy will do whatever it takes to be a good boy. The edge of his mouth spasms again. Um, leave me alone? Yes. Show me your real feelings, sir. It's only natural that you're angry with me. But trust me, in time I will show you I've changed and... He exhales with deep longing before completing his words, and you'll accept me eventually. His last words follow almost softly, as softly as a whisper. Because Billy is a good boy. Um, okay then. Fantastic. Good grief. Whoa, what is going on? The hell was that? The rumors... The local rumors speak woefully of the heathen rites that once took place on this nameless isle, long before the Puritans had settled on eastern shores. Okay, well, I'm gonna see if I can maybe rest up in the attic again. Um, though I'm sure I have to pay again, don't I? Well, didn't hurt to check, I guess. I mean, it did kill time, so I guess it did hurt a little bit, but sure. So I think... Honest Bills is to the left, and I think he might be the only real grocer around this place. So we'll go talk to him. Because I think we might need to get some more rations. I'm fairly certain I'm down to one, and it does seem like my companions don't consume my rations, so... Oh! Okay. Um... Upon immediately immediate scrutiny, you deduce that his wounds, which extend from collar to groin, were inflicted by a broad blade with a singular, almost preternaturally keen edge. Every single thrust perforated right through muscle, sinew, and bone. Hmm. Let's talk to this old man in his pajamas. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot? The Arkham resident is looking at the mutilated corpse as if hypnotized by the slowly bludgeoning, sorry, burgeoning pool of blood that treads its way through the cobblestones of the doomed town. What happened here? The Stabber! The Stabber has killed again! The Arkham Stabber! Where have you been living, sir? I think this is the third victim! All butchers stabbed until they ended up like... Poor Julian here. Um, you mean like a honeycomb? You think this is funny? Wait until he comes for you and then we'll see how funny it is! Well, I'm sorry. Um, Julian, you know this man? He shakes his head. Not a bad fellow. He used to be... 
He used to stay at the Essex Hotel. Didn't deserve to such a fate. Nobody deserves. Looks at the hardly recognizable corpse on the ground. That. Who deserves what they reap here? The man turns and looks at you. Although he remains silent, you sense his wordless acknowledgement. What do you know about this Arkham Stabber? Nobody has any idea who he is. Even the mob can't catch him. Some say he's a demon. Others speculate that he's a loony or of the worst, the wor of the worst kind. Uh, how do you know the Stabber is a he? I don't. He could be a she. Would only be fair after what those brutes to to all the. Uh... He becomes aware of a mob fist standing nearby. Never mind. I, I better go. Okay. Uh, as you are about to leave the site of a gruesome murder, you notice something odd about the hobo standing nearby. The man begins sh to shake as if in the throes of a seizure, and his pupils transform from black to murky white. Abruptly, he kneels as if possessed by an unknown force, dips his hand in the blood pool on the pavement, and begins to draw a star-like symbol on the ground of the dead man's freshly spilled bodily fluid. As you are watching the scene in bewil bewilderment, the milky eyes turn directly to at you, and the broken man speaks in an ominous tone, completely alien to his appearance. Your path crosses with a dead one. This simple flight of a soul will uncover more. Uh, look, call a dead fella. What? Huh. Where? Oh, it was this guy. The man abruptly comes to his senses and stands up looking puzzled, seeing the state of his hands, and then he, uh, he goes into a tizzy. Wh wh what happened to me? Am I hurt? If you really want to know, an unknown entity has been using your body as a vessel. Your answer worsens his panic. What are you saying, mister? You mean a bad spirit? He looks down at his crimson hands once more and begins fleeing in terror. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh well. Can I talk to these guys about that? No? Hmm... His face lightens up the moment you turn to him and he says something you kind of... Oh, it's this guy! Is he following me? What did you just say? Duh, duh. He gives you a knowing look as if the two of you are sharing a joke. Who do you think I am? Look deep into your heart and you'll know. I see him looking at you through you. Or uh, looking at me through you. Why are you following me? We used to walk together into the woods and then to the well at the crossroads. He stares into the emptiness as if seeing it before him. I will draw the water. Let me do it this time. I'll do it this time, sir. Uh, what did you say to me? Hmm, why are you following me? Yes, of course you can draw the water. Might be a risk, but sure. Thank you, sir. I won't drop the bucket, you'll see. I'm strong now. Let's study his movements. Billy starts to move his arms as if using every ounce of strength to turn an imaginary crank. <laughs> Beads of sweat are sliding down his forehead. Is he a mime? Oh god, he's a mime, isn't he? Fuck me. One of the veins on his neck pops as his face gets redder, but unfortunately for him, he hasn't moved the imaginary object an inch. Hmm. Billy? The invisible, invisible tension suddenly breaks. Billy ba barely avoids falling to the floor. Oh no, the rope snaps, sir. He looks down in the imaginary well. A mossy old snake it was. Um, okay. Wait, maybe I can try that again. Let's study his movements. And then, what if we continue to observe him? Oh, it's the same thing. I'm gonna ask nicely, but this is the last time. In response, he starts to shout hysterically. Do it! I deserve it! Which one do you want, sir? The lash or the cold embrace? You'll see that Billy is a good boy. Um. Hmm. Things are getting complicated. Oh, the old doc says there will be more complications. Ah, crooked face! You feel his warm gaze on you again. We're finally together again. Closer than ever. Closer than ever. Uh, I'll just ignore him for now. Hmm, maybe these mob goons know what happened. Two of the mob's cannon fodder are speaking below their breaths. They seem unaware of your presence. Ah, uh, Corley. It seemed the stabber sent another fellow to the big sleep. Should I bring word to the face? 
He get paid to be this dumb Marlin? He points at the corpse with his chin. Does he seem like a man to, of the uh, face to you? Uh, no, Corley. Then think about it. Is it really necessary to take this to the face ourselves? Don't you remember how mad the boss got when that gumshoe Wilkin Wilkins, or, uh, Wilkins uh, failed to find that psycho stabber? Wilkins? You watch the burly man struggle to compute the information. I mean that uh, fatso detective whose arms we cut off? The one staying at the eel. See, you can be smart when you need to. Then you just must have been there when the boss got hot under the collar after that idiot Wilkins told him he couldn't find out who the stabber is. Uh, that was a lot of words at one time, Corley. Uh, let me think. The boss got mad that day, uh-huh. So, uh, do I take the words to him or not? The man sighs deeply. Marlin, I sometimes sincerely wish I was a fucking wall, you know. Pointing at a nearby wall. Like that one over there. A simple, unpainted, indifferent brick wall. A uh, wall? Uh, why is that, Corley? So I could simply be without needing to comprehend your bullshit, Marlin. The mob gun takes a deep breath. Look, I plan not to be around when the boss learns that the stab of Psycho is still on Rampage. You better do the same. He looks at the corpse on the floor uh, one last time. He's not one of us anyway, so who gives a crap? Let's speed it, Marlin. Turning to leave, the two mob men stop, uh, spot you standing nearby. The fuck you looking at, sheep? I heard the Arkham Stabber struck again and I came to see it for myself. Mmm. Yeah. Well, this is not the Arkham Ball or some damn fairground attraction. Better mind your own business before Marla makes you th makes you the main attraction. Maybe my own personal tormentor, but wh when it comes to whacking the likes of you, he's a straight up virtuoso if you catch my drift. Um, Let's not tussle with him. I don't think seeing that we overheard a few things is going to be in our best interest. Or is it? Hmm, can we actually discern any information from these guys? Let's not. I I'd say I, I don't want to tussle with them. So, forgive me, but I don't have the time to stay for the performance. Goodbye. Hmm, okay. Well, I actually just came here f to buy some rations from uh, Honest Bills. What the? Billy? Yo. Yo, uh. What the fuck? You are my... Charlie, shoot this loony. Oh, my, oh no! Shit! Billy Crumb has died! Oh, fuck! Finger of punishment and a baby rattle. What in the seven hells? Remorselessly murdered this pesteringly... pertinacious man's bloody corpse is a blatant example of what sort of ill fate can struck uh, those who cross the often murky boundary between sanity and lunacy? Oh shit! Should I have saved him somehow? Unsolved mis- what? Unsolved mystery? So, wait, what happens if I- Whoa! You've scavenged the following items with the help of your investigation skills. So we just got an- Oh man! Just got a free gun! And what does a cult do? Whoa! So we've just got some black ectoplasm too. Holy shit. So now we can start our own um, ghost busting business. Fantastic. Uh, I'd say, you know what, Barbosi? Sure, go for it and let's put the dagger in your other hand. That way everyone gets a gun. Nice. Honest Bill, I'm actually just here to uh, buy some rations. I thought... Oh, I see. Hmm... Right, right. Okay, I don't think we passed the uh, speechcraft check there. Gotcha. Burglar's hood. What do those things do? Uh, used to... Hide the wearer's identity. Hmm, what about the white fedora? Besides tipping it at the ladies and seeing Milady? And then getting uh, told to wear some deodorant and all that such. Okay, well, maybe I'll get the burglar's hood then. Hmm. Oh, shit. I think I also forgot to sell the uh, keys at um, Schmidt's Antiques. 
28 6 for a burglar's hood. Hmm. Should I? What does a backpack do? Uh. Okay, so I guess we can ca carry more items with that. A grappling hook sounds immensely useful. Can be thrown into a ledge to provide a climbing opportunity. But I'm actually here for... Rations. Oh, so that's a liquor base. Gotcha. Non-craftable, required for the prey activity. Whetstone, I'm not sure what that does. Oh wait! Does this guy not sell rations? I could have sworn. Yeah, there we go. Canned pumpkin. Pick some of that up, sure. A lot of cigs though. Um, maybe I shouldn't get the burglar's hood yet. Yeah, maybe I'll get it when I need it. Mm. No, we only need... Oh, oops. Fine. There we go. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's much else that I need to do with that. Then let's head out and try to find... Maybe a sleeping spot. I guess no one comes to clean up the uh, dead body, which kind of makes sense. Sure, sure. Arkham Post. There's nothing that we can do there. But who's this guy? You see a scruffy man dressed in grimy uh, garments. As you approach, you are irritated by the rancid, alcoholic stench of his sweat. The swollen syringe marks on his arms further demonstrate the extent of his addiction. As, you shadow, as your shadow falls over the unkempt and emaciated rummy, he scarcely opens one eyelid as if he's been anticipating a visitor. Deliriously. Gran, is that you? Takes a moment to realize that you're not uh, who he expected. Ah, shoot. Um, putting your hand on his shoulder, are you all right, pal? God, that foul smell. No, let's, I guess, try to be gentle with this guy. Baffled, he shrugs. Who's asking? A drill sergeant? Pfft. Sort off. Sergeant? Interesting guess. Did you serve in the army? Are you a copper? Last time I checked, the mob burned down the whole goddamn police station. He chugs his moonshine and spits. They won't tolerate a snooper on these parts, so up yours, mister. Hmm. Pardon me for seeing him, but you don't look very good. Alright, then rot in the gutter and swallow in your pathetic habits. You don't look very good. I don't need no help. I'm well aware of what Richter's dope does to a healthy person. Do I look like I give a damn? Mentioning the pharmacist's name seems to have given him an idea. Speaking of Richter, what about him? Maybe you could bring me a shot of his morphine. If you insist on bantering with this pathetic waste of a soldier. With my contacts, I can supply all kinds of dope. Give enough to last your lifetime, but tell me what happened to you first. I mean, I already do have a shot of morphine. Mmm, let's get that speech craft. Or use that speech craft, rather. You're quite the black artist, aren't ye? He clearly lacks the self-confidence to play hard to get. Oh, what the heck. I lost everything anyway. Might as well lose a few minutes of story now. He's made a great decision. Good to hear from you again, and soon. You better. Otherwise, they'll come searching for you and there's... Gonna be held today. Takes a deep breath and exhales slowly. All began after I met Quan Robin. My, um... Former... You know... Being a poor cobbler's son, I was obligated to put bread on the table and that's why I joined the guard. Put extra paycheck. You know, from an even poorer Arkham family. Quinn was working at his wireless... Operator at the base. Boy, phew, she had it. Blonde, nice figure. With, a teary, with teary eyes. Oh, how I miss her little escapades. But everything went to hell when she had quit her job due to some family issue back home. I was shaken and broken, but I had to continue my training, knowing not what the worst is yet come. And the footsteps of the apocalypse. Cases of mass hysteria, arson, 
Mass murder power shortages, you know it. National Guard was called to active duty and I was stuck being a full-time soldier. As I was getting to the end of my rope physically, Gwen's last letter proved to be the final blow. She said we had to break up, that she could, could never see me ag again. No reason or explanation. Nothing. He struggles to continue. The old Jeremy Parsons died right then and there, but despite the profound sadness I felt, I forced myself to see her again one last time. So I just escaped the base by hiding inside an Arkham-bound logistics truck. That is what it means to be human. We're social creatures. The lonelier we are, the more desperate we get. No need to fuss over such an insignificant sentimental attachment. Nothing good ever lasts. That sounds very nihilistic. You abandoned your post, huh? So much for honor and duty. Mmm, that sounds more humanist. I'd say... Let's just pass the judgment and ask uh, what happened next. I did. For that, I will never forget myself. I'm a scoundrel for turning my back on the proud institution of our forefathers who fought the Empire. How can I betray the legitimacy of the Minutemen? So you still aspire to be a freedom fighter after all. With a bitter heart? I could. If only we saw the country to protect. After coming to Arkham, I realized that I had to avoid detection, so I disguised myself in civilian clothing and buried my uniform somewhere. And I went straight to Gwen's address. There was nobody in the house. Even their coffee cups were on the table, but they were gone. It says that she vanished or never even existed at all. I lost track of her ever since. I asked around, but only met hostility and apathy. Oh, what a short sighted fool I've been. Hangs his head in shame. Sorry about that, Jeremy. We've all experienced bitter loss. Still do. I hope you find her someday. Mmm. Yeah, sure. Seemed like a good man. Hands you a picture of a blonde woman. This is Gwyn. Will you ask around for... Maybe you can still do better than I did. Mmm. Sure. Thanks, sir. Alright, so I guess we have a photo of Gwen now. Obviously, Gwen Stacy from the... Um... What's it? Spider-Man universe. Portrait of a young blonde woman, plainly dressed and posing chastely. Or chastely. Written on the back is, To my chic with love. Hmm. Okay, so if you find someone, a blonde lady around these parts, can I not? Oh, I can't rest without supplies. Oh, shit. I, I didn't realize that we actually spent supplies on uh, whenever we camped down. Interesting. There's nothing in there, right? Nope, nothing in there. Hmm. All right, well, maybe this guy's got some cheap camping supplies or something. Sir? What do you got? Any camping supplies? And not, uh, you know, bat guano? Miskatonic diploma, what? Really? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, we also need to get the, uh, the Kingsport uh, folk tales. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the book written by that um, dude that told me to meet him, right? Sure. Okay, so let's see what this is all about. As the only book written by the folklorist Stanley Fredkin, this con collection contains several obscure folk tales from the eponymous fishing town which exists in constant timeless isolation. Oh, that's a lot. Wow, that's... that's a lot. Oh, no, no, sorry, I think they're actually repeating. Okay, I see, so let me look at... Uh I wonder if the page numbers are important at all. Hmm. Now, I would love to read this, but that's a lot of information to uh, get through. Maybe I should just have another episode where I uh, read all this stuff. Huh, because it does seem like it could be fairly important. Like this one? It's got an image of a key. Maybe I should just... You know what? Maybe I'll uh, read these in between episodes. And then if there's one that I think is significant, we'll, um, we'll address it, uh, in our next episode or something. Yeah, I think that makes sense. 
I kind of wish that the empty piles here were not uh, highlighted, but... Oh, wait. I'm pretty sure I picked through that already, didn't I not? Wait, was Fabrosi moonwalking just now? I think Fabrosi may have been moonwalking just now. Oh no, maybe not. Okay, I was kind of excited. The prospect of uh, Fabrosi moonwalking or whatever. But sure. Uh, Wait, who was that? There was some dude with a face. Shit, I should go talk to the dude with a face. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Watch that person be no one. But it just seemed kind of fascinating. I kind of wish um, I could see the people. Like this guy. See, he's got something on his face. Oh. I see. Maybe he's just um, ranting about having slept with that prostitute and now he's got uh, shit on his face or something. He's got syphilis. Or something that... Um, maybe face herpes? Maybe he... Um, you know, applied his uh, face to her crotch a little too much, and somehow he got face herpes from her crotch herpes. It very well be right. It very well be. Kids, always use protection, even when you're not having sex, especially when you're not having sex. All right. Well, um, let me actually quickly drop by what's his face's uh, place again. Uh, Schmidt's Antiques. And then we'll sell the keys, I think. And then we'll probably end the episode there. Yeah, I don't seem to have made much progress today, but... Then again, we did meet some new people and whatnot. Uh, may I see your wares? So... Okay, so I can not sell these things. What is this junk fetish? Used for enhancing spells. Okay, so we should definitely keep that. That is a key and it's junk, a rusted useless key, a modern key, a regular key belonging to a more modern lock. So it's also classified as junk though. Should I not sell this? Oh man, I'm not entirely sure if I should sell this or not. Hmm, maybe it won't. Fine, I'm sorry to have wasted your time guys, my bad. Alright, well, as punishment, I'll go ahead and read the uh, book in between episodes and discern um, if there's anything important uh, worth knowing and all that such. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast!